fun and welcome to Unity of London. All you beautiful souls that are joining us right now and the beautiful souls that will listen to this service later on uh, online. We are so grateful that everyone is here to join us at Unity of London on this fine Sunday morning. And uh, Unity of London shares the same uh, vision statement as almost all the unities worldwide, worldwide. And that is that we see a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. Unity is not a, a church. Unity is not a uh, Christian denomination. Unity is a movement. It, and it's about people having, uh, share, having spiritual awakening and sharing it with others. Thus, one light lighting another light. And we see a very bright world uh, as we do that. And, and um, how we do that at Unity of London with our mission is that we are here to transform lives by making that difference, sharing our spiritual awakening and inspiring others to make a positive difference in the world. We're so glad that everyone's here. And we're so glad that everyone at Unity of London is uh, tapped into our mission statement. Uh, we have break, breakout rooms available. Uh, myself or any of the other prayer chaplains can be available, but we're set up with breakout rooms. If you'd like prayer or one-on-one -on -one prayer after the service, just uh, you can make a note on the chat. Uh, if you have Larry's phone, you can text him maybe, but uh, just let us know where you can mention it at the end of the service. So we're happy to be able to provide one-on-one -on -one prayer. And uh, our one major announcement is today's our AGM. So unfortunately, uh, we can't have a pot luck, but we can have some luck and maybe have a pot of soup by us and, and have some soup while we have our AGM. It'll be right after uh, today's service. And it's also Celebration Sunday today too. So it's a great day to be here at Unity of London and enjoy this time together. So think about what you are celebrating so you, that you can share. Uh, and now as we move more into the service, I invite you to open your hearts and your minds for prayer and join me in prayer. For those that are comfortable, close your eyes. And most importantly, take your attention from out of your head and focus on your heart. And as we come together heart to heart as one in prayer, we hold all of our congregation all of our members and those connected with Unity of London in prayer. We also include all unities, but in particular Unity of Edmonton and Unity of Cal Calgary uh, in our prayer. And we hold all spiritual gatherings in our, with our prayer today, for we know there are many paths to the one and only God. And so as we feel the heart, the love in our hearts, and we open up and share that love, releasing the loving energy that is God flowing through us. We are reminded of the power of prayer and we affirm that everyone that is hurting is at this moment healing. We celebrate the return back to our service and joining us, Marianne, and she's proof of the power of prayer that as she moved through a bug that bothered her body, the prayer pushed it on out and she once again shines bright. And we see that happening for each and every person that is suffering. For we know that we have the ability through meditation and prayer and connecting with spirit that we are co-creating our world and our life. And with love, we co-create a world of love. And so it is, and so we let it be, and this is a great day, and it's going to be a great service. Amen. And now um, Don's going to read our, from our daily word. Energy. The energy of divine life renews me. How do I have the focus to achieve my goals? How do I have the strength to carry on through challenging times? How do I have the aptitude to learn, grow, and change when I'm called upon to do new things? At the heart of everything I'm called to do, what I'm called to do is the energy to do it. 
I am a divine being and I call upon the power of God within me to channel my energy in deliberate ways. Divine energy is inexhaustible. Unlike my muscles, which can tire, and my mind, which can become frazzled, the power of God within flows through me unimpeded. In prayer, I claim divine energy and imagine it flowing through me with the force of a mighty waterfall. I am grateful for my renewal. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Isaiah 40, verses 30 and 31. I have the pleasure today to again have our dear Pauline giving us a message. Pauline has been a Unity Prayer Chaplain since 2008. She's been a board member and a past president of the Unity Board of London. In 2020 and now in 2021, she is a co-partner with Sylvia Vanderhoek of our spiritual leadership team. Pauline continues to be an active student of Unity teachings and aspiring licensed Unity teacher. She's a published writer and a communications and lifestyle coach. We look forward to Pauline's message to see with wisdom. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dawn. And if you're wearing glasses right now, I'd like you to take them off just for a second. And those glasses allow you to see the external world, maybe to read your notes, maybe to read books, maybe to see people from afar. But today's message is about what do we see from our spiritual essence? I've been studying with Paul Hasselbeck the last two weeks and for four more weeks based on his book, Power Up. And you'll notice that on the book, if you have it, he revisits the 12 powers as accelerated abilities. Now that is different. To me that the word abilities, accelerated, is different than powers. There's an excitement about it. And the excitement is that wherever you are right now, you can continue to accelerate those abilities, those 12, what we've always called powers. This is the month of wisdom. And it's defined in the book by Reverend Paul Hasselbeck and Cher Holton as the ability to judge, evaluate, discern, appraise, and apply what, apply, apply what is known. And Dan, my husband, Dan, always says to me before I few days before I'm going to be presenting. What's your message about this week? And I said, it's about wisdom. He said, oh, that's something that you can't get in university. That's from life's experiences. <laughs> so right. <laughs> so true. It's applying what we know. And today I'd like you to, while, while listening, to start asking yourself, Am I applying what I know or am I stuck in some habits? Am I wise enough to evaluate myself and to discern what more I could be doing? And it's fascinating that this presentation comes on the same day as our board meeting. I just want you to think about it. I expect many of you were asked, would you like to be on the board? What was your first response if you were asked? Oh, me? Not me. How could I do that? I don't do stuff like that. I don't know what your response was, but I just invite you in listening to start to appraise you and to let you 
ask yourself, am I limiting myself in any way? In any way. When I watch commercials on television, usually I mute the sound and I read a book instead <laughs> because so, so many of the commercials are horrible. Somebody tried to sell me something I don't want and I know I don't want it. But there are a couple of commercials that touched my heart. And I want to share one of them with you because this is a commercial where discernment and wisdom was being evidenced by a little guy. You might not be surprised that this commercial is about chocolate, but I won't say what kind of chocolate because I'm not advertising the chocolate. The scene starts on a bus. A little boy looks to be about maybe six or seven, is sitting beside his mom in the bus. Scott's nodding, he's seen this commercial maybe. And he has something clutched in his hand. You don't see it right away, but he's looking at his mom and she's shaking her head, no. It turns out it's a chocolate bar. And, and it looks as though the top has been, the, the wrapper has been ripped back just a little bit. So, so I'm guessing the little boy started to, oh no, you're not eating that in the bus. So he looks a little disappointed. Then he turns his head to the side and to the side of him fa um, facing him so he's facing out, you know, about buses anyway, turns his head to the side and there's a girl. She's maybe in her late teens, early 20s. She's got her head down and he has a look of puzzlement on his face. And he looks at her. And then he looks at her again and she looks up and he holds up his chocolate bar and he <laughs> offers it to her. And she you knows she looks down again and he gets, gets a little face on his mouth. And you can see the mascara running down her cheek. She's been crying. Then he offers it to her again. He pushes a little bit closer and this time she takes it. And he smiles a little wee smile and then he looks down, sort of embarrassed. And then his mom whispers in his ear, good boy. Now, why do I share that? Because the little boy was able to see a way to share. He could have been seeing only his own disappointment when his mom said, no, you can't eat the chocolate bar on the bus. He saw someone's distress and he offered something that he liked. And the girl took it. Do you see any opportunities in your life right now to share something of you that might bring joy to someone else? So remember that wisdom is applying what we know. And we know that when we send out love, it makes a difference in the world. Dr. Wayne Dyer, and most of you are familiar with him, said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I love this picture. Uh, the little duckling maybe seeing the could be a swan. Or maybe the swan only seeing the duckling in the mirror. This could be a reverse mirror. So the question is, when you look in the mirror, who do you see? What do you see? If you're a certain age, many of us, you might see more wrinkles than there were yesterday. <laughs> you think, ah! But then you move beyond that. And if you truly, truly have the wisdom to live from spirit, take another look and see if you can see 
a radiant divine light shining through in a way it never did long, long ago. I think I shared that the only time I saw my father as an adult was one time. And he came to visit my mother. We were living in a little apartment, lower duplex on Oxford Street. The house is still there, the building's still there. And I think my mother had invited him because I was ready to go to teacher's college. And it was about the tuition and, and he and his family were paying my tuition. And somewhere in the conversation, I don't know what my mother said, but I remember what my father said. Oh, she'll get better with age. Referring to me. I don't know if he said she'll get better or she'll look better. Her looks will improve with age. One of those two. And in my head, my 20, 22, how old was I? Maybe 22 year old head, I thought, well, what's wrong with me now? <laughs> but looking back, that phrase has come into my mind often. And I don't think my father meant it as an insult. I mean, we, we didn't really know each other. Because I have become better with age. And so have you. I hope you see that. I hope you see that you are, you're not only wiser, you're more able to apply your knowledge to things like COVID. You're more able to bounce back. I shared this with Dan and I said, we get better with age. He said, I know some grumpy, ratchety old people. <laughs> and I said, well, they're in the minority. He said, I don't know about that, Polly. I said, well, the ones I know are in the minority. Older people that I know are in unity. And the unity people I know are wise enough to look in the mirror and see a radiant spirit shining forth. And that goes way beyond the external. And in our meditation, I'll share a little poem about that. There is so much that we can look at in life. So many things we can look at and consider changing our outlook. If you look in your purse and you only see a few cents, and it's getting it's way before the end of the month when your pension comes in. Are you able to see that something unexpected might happen? Something wonderful might happen. When you look around your house or your apartment, are you able to see opportunities to continue to enjoy life? I hope so. This morning, I was um, squeezing lemon, a lemon. And here's the squeezer that I use. It's got a little container on the top. And so, you just put the lemon on, you squeeze it, the juice flows through to the bottom. And the seeds collect in the top. And then you're able to pour out the juice without the seeds. Well, today I tried to pour and nothing was happening. And the juice was accumulating. It went up to the top. It didn't pour very well. Do you know why? Because all these seeds were stuck. Where it was supposed to be pouring, the seeds were stuck in the spout. Why do I share that? Because we can get stuck. Have you ever felt stuck? Stuck in the same job? Stuck in the same way of looking at life? Stuck thinking, oh, 
I just have this habit. I'm never going to grow any better. Why do I have to listen to someone say you're getting better with age? I don't feel better. You're stuck. Get unstuck. Go to your spiritual heart to let yourself flow. Every day at prayer, I share a little message from Louise Hayes' calendar, and this shows fish swimming. And the message is, when I stay flexible, I can flow through the day. When you see yourself as flexible, you are able to meet the challenges small and big, just like Marianne did, our dear Marianne. And I love this saying, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. And we don't know how long this COVID storm is going to take, but we do know that we can learn to dance in the rain. We figure out a way. We figure out a way to see the joy in every single moment. Stop right now and give a big smile. <laughs> Yay, Scott. <laughs> I can see Scott and Dawn and Janet and Ed. And I know that they're all smiling. And it just takes a second. It's seeing a reason to smile. And if there's no reason, just smile anyhow. I love this poster. Here's a guy in a subway station with his guitar case open, waiting for people to put money in. He's playing the guitar. Can you read the sign? It says, if you're homeless or need help, take as much as you need from the case. And he's got a little number sign that says, hopeful cases. Is that beautiful? If you're homeless or need help, take as much as you need from the case. Hopeful cases. This is a guy who's trying to earn money in the subway by playing his guitar. And at the same time, he has the wisdom to know that there'll be people walking by who might be in worse shape than he is. Take from the case, hopeful cases. Now, this is just before meditation. And I, I went to unity.org and I looked for something that I thought would be so much fun. And that is also about seeing. And it's about seeing yourself as through spiritual lens and joy. So the motto last year was see through spiritual lenses. 
and it seems so fitting for today. And today, whoops, before we go into, just as we go into meditation, whoops, I went too fast. As we go into meditation, I share with you one of the poems that I created for my course that just ended, the self-care course. So I invite you to go to your heart space, to close your eyes if you want. This is called Shine Spirits Healing Light. Behind our outer external face is loving spirit, eternal grace, healing light that warms and lifts sad solo hurting mid cold empty drifts. Flow kindly spirit to eager open arms. No loving healing will soothe all harms. Comfort from aching of body or heart. Spirit shines forth with glowing light dart. Embracing our light, we shine it to all, raising up friends who have started to fall. Oneness we know is the answer we seek. Spiritual healing, bumpy ride to the peak. Why bumpy, you ask? Faith not up to the task? Habits created from long, long ago keep holding us back from shining our glow. Each step forward creates a small spark. It takes only one spark to make light in the dark. Through prayer and through learning, we, we soon start to shine spiritual healing for friends, yours and mine. the next moments of meditation and I invite you I always do every when we do it on our daily prayer I invite people to stretch not just stretch physically not just move your arms move your head move your neck stretch your legs but also to stretch internally to stretch internally so that you can see with wisdom what is yours to do. So that you can see yourself like the swan in the mirror. Or you can see yourself as a mighty horse galloping across the meadow. Or you can see yourself as a spiritual light shining for us all. That light that shines in your spirit is meant to be shared. It's not meant to be covered up. Not meant to be hidden away. The light that is you is meant to be shared with others. You get to choose how you share it. Or you get to choose to keep it covered up because you're too scared to let it shine. When opportunities beckon, when someone sends you an invitation, think more than once or twice or three times before saying, oh no, I couldn't do that. Just consider who you are and the unique radiance of you. And should your mind wander in the next few minutes, I invite you to share the following affirmation. I am safe. I am happy. I am well. I am safe. I am happy. I am well. I am a radiant spirit shining forth for all to see. I am safe, I am happy, I am well. 
I am a radiant spirit shining forth for all to see. I'll let you know when our time is fulfilled. As we prepare to return, we know that throughout the day we can see with spiritual lens or we can shut our eyes. It's really up to us. Carrie Newhoff said that fear blurs our vision. Wouldn't you rather have clear vision? See through spiritual lens. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> That's a great song. Uh, now we'd like to take a moment to show our appreciation and our gratitude for those that and give thanks for those that continue to give uh, their financial gifts to our spiritual community and the energy of money, whether it's tithes or uh, just giving a, a donation. When we've been spiritually fed, it's always nice to give to the community that spiritually feeds you. Uh, if you're fairly new to Unity, you can certainly send us a check in the mail. You can go onto our website and just click on the Tidely button and uh, that's an easy way as well. Uh, or during the week, if you want to come by, I'm generally there at the, um, at the building if you want to use the machine and, and uh, use your debit or, or credit card. But we are so grateful that everyone continues to, to uh, donate and, and give their gifts. Now our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds me, the love of God enfolds me, the power of God protects me, the presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is and all is well. And in a spirit of unity of London, yay, God. And we'll have our peace song.
it's Celebration Sunday. Uh, Larry, I can't see everybody, so maybe we can stop sharing. But Don, go ahead. I see your hand. I have a big something to celebrate. Many of you know that I have a granddaughter who lives in New Zealand, and she just let me know the other day that I am in a number of months going to become a great grandmother. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, Lois, I see you with your hand up. Now you have to unmute yourself, hon. No, we can't hear you. There we are. There you go. Okay. Uh, some of you know, on March 2nd, I became 80 years young. And we had a Zoom birthday party. So a lot of you celebrated with me and we had a wonderful time. So it's been a great year. Wonderful, wonderful. Happy birthday again. Thanks. Here again. Yeah, um, on uh, February 8th, two exciting things happened to me. I got my first COVID symptoms and I turned 75. Well, I wanted a surprise birthday party. I really didn't want a, the gift of COVID, but I got it. So I accepted, which leads me to realize after all this time has passed since that exact moment, that I was given the best gift that I have had in a very long time. Miss Monsieur, I, I call him Monsieur COVID, and I became friends. I lay on the bed and I spoke with him and I saw I saw the face of God in 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 him. And I told him that um, I was very grateful for anything that he may offer me in terms of helping me to grow and transform into a better person than I am. But there are lots of people out there who may need your help as well. So maybe he should just move on and find <laughs> another place where he would be a little bit more welcome. Well, lo and behold, he left. Well, he's still lingering, but that's okay because you can't have too many friends. However, I do know that the greatest gift through this experience with Monsieur COVID has been that I possess already right now and will never have to lose the spiritual, the emotional, the mental, the physical abilities that I have to transform continually and to be the woman I know I was born to be. And I want to thank each and every one of you for your prayers and your, um, uh, your sending me the energy to know that this is one of the universal truths. Thank you. That's a wonderful celebration. Thank you. I saw Lucy with her hand up and I see Wilda. Lucy? Hi, good morning. Thank you, Pauline, for such a wonderful message. Uh, it was very timely for me. I uh, celebrated my birthday on Thursday and uh, had uh, a nice, uh, as we say in French, tete a tete with my partner. So wonderful. I'm very grateful. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank Happy you. birthday, Lucy. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. 
Okay, Wilma? Okay, so uh, some of you know this information already, but some of you do not. So I'm making it public today. So big changes coming in my life. Uh, most of you know I'm originally from Manitoulin Island and I was born there and my plan has always been to move back. So last uh, September, I bought a house in Gore Bay on Manitoulin Island. It closed on September 28th. So this weekend, you may see the background of me is not my picture frames, which you would usually see from my business, Creative Art and Frame, but it's someplace else. So what happened this weekend is um, my roommates and I have moved out to an Airbnb in London. And um, over the course of the weekend, there have been 24 showings at my house. <laughs> so hopefully tomorrow, uh, my house will close. And in the middle of May, I am moving to Manitoulin Island permanently. Uh, I will come back and visit. I'll still be on my Unity uh, weekly uh, meetings and so forth uh, services uh, but the other thing that is really great in the house that I bought um, my sister who has MS is moving up with me to Manitoulin as well so what we're doing is we're putting a 750 square foot addition onto the house so that she has uh, a completely accessible studio apartment herself so anyway, so that's my big news, folks. So there cool. you go. That's celebration. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful. Catherine? Thank you. Yes, on March 3rd, I celebrated my birthday. So I'm officially now 68. And yes, I'm older than Larry. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he never lets me forget that. <laughs> <laughs> but wiser as well, as Pauline so beautifully <laughs> pointed out today. <laughs> That's right. Right. Uh, and I'm also uh, celebrating that we were able to uh, buy our, my, you know, um, our uncle's car from him. He's 92. He had a seven-year-old beautiful Volkswagen Touring with 40, 48,000 kilometers on it. <laughs> It still smells brand new. And he called us and said, I'm finished with driving. Would you like to buy my vehicle? So we have like a brand new vehicle. It's just, I mean, abundance, like Pauline said today, you just never know where it's going to come from. We've known we needed a, a newer car, a more reliable car for a long time. But we just kept sitting back and saying, we'll know when, when it's right. Yeah. And then this just came up at the right time and that's how life works, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I'm celebrating that as well. Thank you. Wonderful. Happy birthday. Happy birthday and congratulations on the new vehicle. Happy birthday, Kat. Oh, I wanted to thank everybody for, oh my gosh. I mean, for the first time in, well, I shouldn't say that, but and the evening of my birthday, my last birthday message came in about 11 o'clock from the West Coast. I heard from all my siblings. I heard from so many of my family. I heard from so many of my Unity family. I woke up to two dozen red roses in the morning from my seat. I got taken out for dinner that night because the, the, uh, the zone went to... Uh, orange or whatever so that anyway we went out for a beautiful dinner just the two of us and I went to sleep that night feeling so loved and you know that's something I want to recognize every day is allow myself to feel that and then radiate that back out because it must be reciprocal in order for it to have the power that we talk about all the time right so oh my goodness I, I just wanted to share that with you because I heard a saying last week that said, the one thing we lie to ourselves about the most is our beauty. And so I really want to start sharing the beauty in my life and my existence and my family and friends and because it's all around me all the time. So I really, really, really felt it on March 3rd when I went to sleep that night with a big smile on my face. So thanks everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Patsy. Patsy, I saw you had with your hand up. Patsy, can't hear you. You're muted. 
You have, there you go. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, my grandson moved back to London two years ago with a suitcase. He went and stayed with my son and daughter-in-law who managed to take a road with them. We all helped. He had nothing, he had no ID. He had, he had nothing. He had a suitcase with some clothes in it. Today, he lives on his own. He has a good job. He's got his driver's license and he bought a car, a 2018 Ford Taurus. 22 years old and he just in two years my son and daughter-in-law did such a good job with him yeah he's just blossomed and he's the man that i have always 